All right, how's it going everybody? I want to show you the next part of the series where we install a one inch brass drain plug. What you see here is pretty much all the tools you're gonna need. You're gonna need a spade. I'm using a one inch because my hole that I have on my boat is already cut out for one inch. So we're gonna use that. We need a flaring tool. If you need to find this, here's a good up close shot of what the uh, part number is. Sea Dog, I've used this tool twice before. Uh, super helpful, so definitely grab that. And then the one inch uh, drain tube is made out of brass. One side is flared and one side is not. You'll also need PL Marine. This is made by Loctite. It's an adhesive sealant. They have the 10 ounce, which is what I use, or they have a smaller one. If you're just doing a a drain tube, you can actually just get the smaller one. I have a, um, a boatload of these laying around, so I've, I've been uh, using this one. You also need a measuring tape. You'll see you'll need a um, sanding block to kind of cut some of the uh, excess um, gel coat in some areas. You'll see, you'll see what I mean when I look at mine. You'll need a caulking gun and then a way to cut. You, you don't have to have, like I've got this um, D-Wall, but you can actually use a hacksaw. Hacksaw will cut this super easily, and we'll talk about how to measure it and all that fun stuff here in a bit. But this is kind of what you're going to need to get this uh, project started, as well as a, a good uh, sharpie as well. So let's let's look at the boat real fast. Okay, so as you can see here, I've already drilled this one out, and you can see through all the different layers of marine grade plywood. It worked out really, really well. Super happy. And then the cut was just absolutely fantastic. You can see actually where the old uh, brass um, flare was here. It still has the marking on it. But we also have some unevenness with the gel coat. We want to kind of sand that out a little bit. We also have a little, I think it's a little drip of maybe epoxy or something. So what we're going to do is clean up this area with the sandpaper first and then we'll get started now like obviously i drilled in already so i, I kind of took some of the fun out of it but i'll talk about some ways that you can drill and start your drill to make sure it, it drills through evenly all right so see i did pretty good you just want to make sure there's no anomalies around here We're, the pl marine will fill up that little gap right there and along these sides so nothing Nothing to really worry about. The other thing is you want to make sure, now obviously you're you're not going to have a hole like mine ahead of time, but what you want to do right before you drill, you'll see with the spade it's got a pointy tip. Try to get as close as you can. You may need to stab it a few times to make sure it is directly in the center as you're starting off. And if you, if you do start to see it's pitched in the wrong direction, try to readjust it a few times because you want to make sure you're not drilling too much on the, into the fiberglass on any given side. So take your time when you're stabbing this to make sure it, it is uh, perfectly even. So anyway, what you're going to want to do in terms of the angle is you want to try to follow the angle that the boat is pitched at. So you don't want to you don't want to drill down necessarily and straight up. You can see right this angle is pitched at a somewhat upward pitch here but you just want to make sure you're following the right angle and you can see that we're doing it correctly based on the angle of the spade versus how it's going upwards like that so it if you do it slowly and correctly you'll see it turns out pretty well notice how it's kind of kind of facing upwards like that nice and straight all right so the trick is, as you're drilling through this, you'll start to feel at a certain point where just the tip of the spade comes through. Once you get to that point, go ahead and stop. And you're gonna basically go and start drilling through the inside because you don't wanna have an edge here where it, it actually kinda like uh, creates these little spurs on the outside. You want it to be clean because you'll notice when you're dr drilling this side it'll be a nice clean cut this direction but if you drill from the opposite direction as soon as that spade bit 
this part comes through, you actually have it where it's a nice clean edge in both directions. So just a little tip. Let's go on the inside of the boat now. Okay, so just as this spade comes through this side, you want to put it in that same hole and slowly start to drill. And then you'll see here it doesn't create these astronomically terrible little burrs as it comes through. And it, it more or less creates this nice somewhat flush edge to it. You've got a little bit of the Kevlar sticking up, but it's nothing crazy. Nothing crazy at all. Alright, so once you get the the physical hole drilled through, you want to make sure it's clean. Do a few runs here with your finger and make sure you get this area nice and clean. Then what you're going to do is grab your your actual drain, your one inch flare here and open it up and like I said you got two ends you got a flared end and then the other one is not flared what I recommend is you put the flare edge on the inside and the reason being is it just it has a nicer appearance and if you're gonna have any issues you want it to kinda of be on the outside whereas this is like a perfectly factory completed seal so check that out this is something else you need to consider too Notice how this drain doesn't exactly sit flush. And the reason is, if you watch some of my other videos, is because this is kind of at an angle. You want it to be low in the boat, but at the same time, if you go too low and you don't follow the pitch of the boat, then at that, what you're going to run into is you have this huge gap up here and then you're going to open yourself up for leaks. There's an easy way to fix it. It just means um, what we're going to have to do is do a little bit of mitering here on the Kevlar. Not a big deal at all. I'll show you how we do it and it'll still look nice afterwards. But what we're, what we're going to need to do is grab that marker that we were looking at earlier, that Sharpie, and we'll, we'll make a little scribe right here. Okay, so where the uh, the brass strain plug touches is where you want to mark. And if you're wondering how much you're going to have to take out, you can see based on the top, which for me is just about a quarter of an inch. So what you're going to need, and you've got a variety of different tools. If you've got a pencil grinder, they have different uh, terms. But you'll need something that, that can kind of make a, a rounded edge in here. And that's this is kind of what I'm using. There's a few different methods to do it. You, you technically could turn a grinder sideways, or if you have a, a Dremel, you could use a Dremel, but definitely keep this tube nearby, because as you're rounding this edge, you're gonna need to stop every once in a while and stick the brass drain plug back in there and, and make sure it sits flat. Once this sits flat all the way around, then you can go ahead and stop. So let's go ahead and take our uh, grinder here and just grind uh, basically a small U into the bottom. You don't want to grind on top, definitely don't do that. Grind towards the bottom. Okay, so one thing to note here is you don't want to necessarily grind into the, the plywood. What you're doing is you're grinding into the actual epoxy. When, what you're doing is trying to smooth out the bottom. You're not necessarily trying to sh change the shape of the hole. Notice how once I put a, a little bit more of a cut at the bottom, now it's it's kind of sucked in a little bit more. So you just keep doing that until it sits flush on top. And you'll see it'll sit flush at the top and at the bottom. So we'll do a little bit, a little bit more grinding on the epoxy down here. And we'll trim this Kevlar up a little bit to make it nice and clean. But that's that's how you want to do it. You don't want to grind into the the actual wood. You're just going specifically at the epoxy or uh, polyester resin if that's what you're using. All right. So the bottom is pretty good now. You can see here we ground the uh, epoxy down. And now as we put the drain in, the points of contact that it hits are these uh, bottom pieces. 
We want to get a little bit more. It just needs maybe, see if I can get it to focus, maybe about an eighth of an inch. And the way you do it, like I said, is you just kind of grind these. So just be careful as you're watching and you're doing this process. If you don't see it touching anymore at the bottom, double check where your tube is touching, which is on this side, then you need to start grinding that. Otherwise, if you keep grinding the bottom, you're, you're just going to be wasting your time. So now we're going to kind of open it up a little bit more along these edges and we should see it fit in perfectly fine here in just a minute. Okay, came out pretty good. I think that is going to do it. Yes, looks good. All right, so we have this little bitty gap right here, which is good because what that does is it kind of gives it a little bit more of a ledge if water needs to get out versus having this little bit of valley here. It can kind of just go whoop and then into the drain hole right there. But this is good. This is what we're looking for. Like I said, you want to kind of, what you're doing is grinding the unevenness of the epoxy, not necessarily the, the wood inside. And you'll have a fit like that. It's pretty, pretty darn good. And this little excess uh, Kevlar that's sticking out, what I'll, what I'll come through and do is trim that up with the uh, scissors. Okay, a little bit of excess there, but I'm not worried about it. Not worried about it at all, but we did trim a lot of it out. Okay, so anyway, let's go now and talk about measuring. So what you wanna do is put your drain in and try to push it as far as it'll go. You don't want to allow any extra slack in there because we're we're actually going to go and measure it now. So as you're measuring it, you got to make sure it's all the way in. So that's good. I wouldn't necessarily go as far as hitting it with a hammer. I don't think that's necessary. But like this bottom section where you were um, kind of mitering that down a little bit with, you want to make sure that's all the way in. So this is good. Let's go on the um, other side and measure it. Okay, so what I did was I made a mark. Uh, I kind of went all the way around. You don't have to do that, but you want to just make a mark where where it's uh, meeting up with the transom itself. And then once you do that, go ahead and take it off and you'll have a, a mark like this. And I'll show you what we do next. All right, so once you've got your drain plug, you can measure one eighth past that line, or if you want to allow a little bit extra uh, wiggle room you can do 3 16 I actually did 3 16 on mine so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is the packaging that this came with I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it around very carefully and that'll give me an, um, a way to trace around that new line so just a little trick to consider there I'll do a little bit better job wrapping it around but that's a good idea and that'll give you your uh, 3 16 or 1 8 gap that you need there all right, there you go. So just remember, cut on the top one. If you cut the bottom one, well, you're gonna have to get another one. But this is a, a three inch brass drain plug, so that's what we're gonna use. So anyway, go ahead and now use your hacksaw. If you have it, I've got this little fancy guy. I'm gonna go ahead and use this and uh, you know, be very careful as you're cutting it. You wanna to try to make that edge as straight as possible. Try to stay in those lines so you make sure you get a perfect cut. Okay, you notice we got a little bit of, um, we got some burrs here. So what you're gonna to wanna to do now, it's thin enough metal. You wanna to try to smooth this whole thing out and get any kind of burrs out of it. Now, another thing to consider too here is if you're worried about how straight your angle is here, you can always grab a file because a file is typically nice and flat and you can kind of trim it up a little bit, straighten it up if you've got some high spots with a file and that'll kind of help clean it up. So not to worry, you'll, you'll still get a nice um, straight cut. So what we'll do now is we'll actually take the flaring tube out, or the flaring tool and these are going to be, I believe, three-quarter inch 
So we'll need a three quarter inch and then you can use a crescent on one side and we'll go ahead and get started. This is uh, the time when you're gonna need to open up your uh, PL Marine or if you're using the other brand. There's a few other brands, but just make sure it's Marine. Don't use anything that doesn't say Marine on it. Uh, I've used this before in my other rebuild project. I absolutely love it. I love Loctite products. So anyway, let's go ahead and cut this tube and get ready to inst um, start installing this flare here. Okay, so definitely want to have another glove handy for this um, for this spot because you're actually going to have to get your your hand kind of dirty or your finger more specifically because what's going to happen is you're going to start coating in here with the adhesive and you want to make sure that you get all the way around. Alright, take a look. Huge glob of Peel Marine. So what I'm going to do at this point is just kind of make sure I get all the way around. If you get some on the outside, don't don't sweat it. It cleans up. We're not going to let it sit there and dry. So yeah, don't sweat it. Just make sure, spend some time here because this could, this is what a lot of people will say causes leaks on your transom. So it's better to spend some time and get this right before you put that drain in make sure you have 100% coverage you see that little spot up there that I missed get in there and fix that you want to make sure you don't miss anything so yeah looks good and like I said here you can put a little dab around, uh, around there as well where the little area is like I said, we're gonna go clean this all up afterwards and make it nice and presentable. And you see that one, yeah, we're, we still gotta do a little bit of work there. But anyway, back to the, the drain hole. Um, let's go ahead now and install the one inch drain. Okay, you'll see here, we got the uh, flaring tool installed, pretty easy. Made a mess with with all the PL Marine all over the place, but that's good. We wanna make sure we've got plenty of coverage on it. So what we'll do now is I'm gonna put my three quarter on this side and over here I'll have my crescent wrench and we'll just go ahead and start tightening it until the flare starts doing its thing right there. Okay, so you can see it, it actually started to flare and I like to do a little grunt on it, not too crazy because if you do too much you'll split it. But I did put a fairly good, I say a grunt, but you know what I mean, like, you know, you, go, uh, you know, <laughs> a little comedy there for you. Anyway, but yeah, that, that's about what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and loosen this and see if the flare looks good on this side, if it checks out good over here. Then we'll go check it out on the inside and then we'll start cleaning this stuff up. If you notice when you go to remove this nut if it spins like the whole flare and everything spins you probably don't have it tight enough and you'll probably need to put another grunt on it and basically just twist it a little bit more all right a lot of pl marine on this let's go ahead and clean it up and take a look and see what it looks like without all this extra adhesive on it all right what do you think I think it looks pretty good i cleaned out the hole real good make sure that there was no excess pl marine checked along the edges here and make sure there was no gaps for anything. I'm very, very happy with the way it looks. Not very happy with this epoxy drip here, but that's a whole nother story. Anyway, but let's go ahead and inspect it from the inside. I, I think it's good on the outside for sure. Okay. And this is what it looks like on the inside. No issues there. Just cleaned it up just a tad. Made sure there was no excess PL Marine laying around here, but this is good. What you may want to do if you have, if you're using Kevlar like me, where you have these little excess strands, or if you have 1708, when because you're going to be still building the stringers, what you can do is take your paintbrush and paint down here to kind of fill in any kind of abnormal gaps if you like, and just make sure if you do that, like with this little gap right here just make sure you um, clean anything that gets into the hole because that may affect when you put your drain in your drain plug in there later on 
So just something to consider. But yeah, otherwise, if, if you like, you can fill this with PL Marine. Yeah, there's no real right answer to that. So anyway, you'll see what I'll probably do in the end is I'll, I'll fill in just a little bit of epoxy in this area just to kind of give it uh, a cleaner look where I don't have all these little pieces of Kevlar flared up. And I, I like to go for that that finished look. And I did kind of, I with my little grinder, I buzzed the epoxy a little bit right here. And that kind of annoys me. A little bit of a perfectionist. So anyway, but that's it. That's a uh, that's a drain plug install. Nothing crazy. Just remember when you measure it on the other side, leave you know anywhere between an eighth to three sixteenths, and definitely do this part here where you you bevel the the bottom side. Otherwise, your drain will not sit properly. But that's it. That's installing a drain on your uh, project. I hope the video was helpful. If you haven't already. Click on that picture of me riding in the boat. That will subscribe you to the channel. If you have any other questions, concerns, leave some comments in the comments field. Like the video if you thought it was helpful. And we will catch you on the next episode. Have a good one.